Hi, I'm going to continue my game where I find three errors in texts that people from the Effective Altruism Forum submitted. So I'm on the third submission of three, which is against the singularity hypothesis. It is this 24 page PDF, but it's only 18 pages of actual content. There's the cover page and references as well. Haven't read any of it yet. I just checked the length. So my goal is to look at it and find three errors. Okay, so first thing is, in some broad general sense, I'm on the same side as this paper. I'm not impressed with the singularity hypothesis. Furthermore, I would have liked to debate it for many years, but have been unable to find anyone on the other side who will actually try to engage in a serious rational debate and attempt to reach a conclusion. There's, there's a problem for me, because on the one hand, I don't really want to respect viewpoints that have zero people who are willing to actually defend them in debate, and you just can't talk to them. They aren't like live viewpoints with advocates who will have discussions, answer criticism, answer questions, etc. But on the other hand, like basically all the schools of thought are like that. It's just a broad problem with people being unwilling to debate, not a problem with this particular viewpoint. But the problem makes each viewpoint problematic because if I disagree with it, there's no way to find out why I'm wrong if I'm wrong. No good way, because no one will actually answer questions, debate it. And there's very basic stuff that you can't just read in a book. Like, what's your answer to Popper? Like, none of these people actually read Popper and then engage with his epistemology. They just assume as a premise that Popper is wrong and then go on with their business like he doesn't exist and then won't debate. That's my general take on them. And they, they tend to assume Popper is wrong without reading him and without being able to cite any high-quality argument that he's wrong that they would endorse and take responsibility for. And in my extensive searching, I have not found any reasonable literature arguing that Popper is wrong. To be fair, I don't think that the Popperian community in general is particularly good. I just like Popper himself and think he wrote some good stuff. But, like, I don't think his average fan is better than the average Bayesian forum user.
it's awkward because I talk to people, I'm like, hey, want to debate? And they're like, no. And each one of them individually, that's fine, I don't care. But when it's all of them in aggregate, that's a problem. But none of them individually want to take responsibility for that problem. <clears throat> Whereas my personal attitude is, even if no one else on my side will do anything useful, I will take responsibility for doing my best to fill in the gaps. This AI stuff in general depends on um, models of how intelligence works, which means it depends on epistemology, which means things like whether an inductivist or evolutionary epistemology is true is super relevant, and whether David Deutsch's ideas about universality applied to epistemology, if those are correct, it makes a large difference. Deutsch's view implies basically that there's no such thing as a superintelligence, that human beings are already universal knowledge creators, and an AI can simply match that. And um, it can also have a faster CPU, but that's not going to make it fundamentally smarter than us. A CPU that runs a million times faster than a person, to a first approximation, is going to be as powerful of a thinker as a million people. And there's upsides and downsides to combining all that brain power in one entity instead of having it separate in a million entities. Another way to look at it is I don't think that the bottleneck for most people on being really smart is time. Like if you just if they lived an extra ten years, are they gonna be way smarter? Now maybe it's different if they're living for like thousands and thousands of years. You can debate it. But I think people waste a lot of their time and a lot of their brain capacity. Like, I think they're not using their CPUs at maximum. So if they had more CPU capacity, maybe they could just waste even more of it. People, like, get drunk to help turn their brain off. They don't try to maximize productivity, usually. So, so far the paper is just saying that the singularity hypothesis is popular enough to matter and respond to, basically.
My opinion of the philosophical debates about consciousness is especially low, by the way. I think those discussions tend to be especially confused and unproductive. I hope that the paper will not have a lot of material about that stuff. Although if it does, maybe I'll just quickly find three errors and stop reading. Anyway, yeah, there is a lot of uh, money behind people's ideas that they will not debate. So I think that's problematic. So, thinking that the growth assumptions are too ambitious is not my position. Like, I think that they're qualitatively wrong, not quantitatively wrong. So, this sounds like different arguments than I would make. And yeah, they're talking about growth assumptions rather than, say, epistemology assumptions. So it doesn't sound like it's challenging the hypothesis on the level or in the way that I would. It's going to make some different arguments. So there's a decent chance that I will not agree with the arguments this paper makes. Don't know. But what I'm going to have to do is say, okay, given the, the premises that the paper has granted, then what do I think of its arguments? Rather than looking at it in a Popperian way. Because I think the paper is going to grant non-Popperianism, and everything it says is going to be based on that. Yeah, this seems very standard. Seems reasonable. It um it seems recognizable as what the other side also says a lot of. So it seems fair. Yep, that that this does seem like the basic idea back in nineteen sixty six. One of the things they're assuming here is that intelligence is a quantity rather than a binary distinction. The word in standard English in common usage is used both ways. So I'm intelligent, but a rock is not. That is a binary distinction. And then I'm more intelligent than John is a distinction of degree. We use the word both ways, and 
it would take some uh, careful analysis and argument to figure out what each one means and how they're different, which one's correct, what would apply to AIs, etc. Which I've never seen done, not saying it doesn't exist. Haven't looked super carefully, partly because I don't think anyone on the other side will debate, regardless of what I do. Basically. Unless I get, like, famous, then they will. But it's, uh, it's discouraging to go through literature that you think is wrong and confused and then comment on it to people who are not listening and will not engage. So, so I tend not to do a lot of that. Okay, so I do not agree with this. Well, I mean, as written, it's fine. Yes, commenters have raised doubts, but what I mean is that I think general intelligence is a fine concept. I don't have an issue with it. However, I think that it is binary. Either you have general intelligence or you don't, rather than a matter of degree. I think people mix up whether an agent is intelligent with, like, how skillful it is and how knowledgeable. And skill and knowledge are different things than intelligence. Also, there's the question of why will an AI be especially smart? CPU power and RAM is one of the claimed reasons, but that requires some like meaningful analysis of how exactly those contribute to or cause smartness and how that smartness can then compound. Yeah, I don't know about within the century, but I do think that creating human equivalent AIs, machine intelligence, is uh, is achievable. Like, I think there's no fundamental thing to stop it. But I think that current research approaches won't work, and people need to become Popperians or otherwise change their epistemology to succeed. And I think that current things called AI, like AlphaGo, are a different kind of thing than an AGI, which is not like a particularly special or controversial view. I just mean that I don't think that those things show significant progress towards making an AGI. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Uncontroversial, wow. I don't mind if, if it's controversial. People are allowed to disagree and debate. I'm not saying that no one should disagree with me. That's, that's quite strong. Meaningfully approach human intelligence? I, I'll grant that it, they can be equivalent. And I will grant the cogency of the concept of general intelligence in some form. There's a, like, I think the concept needs to be nailed down a lot more, and I wouldn't agree with all positions on it, but yeah, some, some type of general intelligence, human-like intelligence, no problem. So he's only going to focus on ambitious growth assumptions. All right, so not what I would do, different perspective. Let's see how it goes. So far... Um, the paper hasn't said anything very substantive. Like, there's not a lot to criticize. Like, I have some disagreement with his approach, but not a huge deal. So, I think we're going to get into a more meaty part now. 
So I've read around three of 18 pages, around 20%, and it was fairly introductory. Okay, sure. Yep, you can have relative versus absolute growth. Yes, 2% per year is not super fast, despite being exponential. Agreed. Yeah, one of the issues here is, like, how much is an order of magnitude? How good is that? What is that like? Is that like being one standard deviation better on an IQ test? Or does an order of magnitude mean you're, like, 10x better than any human and just kind of completely outcompete humans at science. Does it mean you're as good as 10 humans or just like your science makes humans stop bothering because you're doing so much better because you're just so far ahead of them? Okay, so he seems to be defining an order of magnitude as 10x without saying that, which I think is problematic. Because 2x can be considered an order of magnitude, it's definition based. So he's just like, even if we double 10 times, that's only three orders of magnitude if orders of magnitude are 10x. I mean, true, trivial, but. It's like slightly misleading. I think this is a biased presentation. I don't like this. Anyway, I don't think this is a good argument so far. But it's not wrong. It's, it's like very simple. Okay, hyperbolic growth, sure. Right, that is extremely strong. And I think it's unreasonable. I disagree with it. But on their premises, I can see how they reach that kind of conclusion. It doesn't take that long for the AI to build better computers. And then build the new AI builds more better computers and so on. I, I get the general concept. How on earth would you do minutes? Because you have to physically construct new computer equipment, don't you? Like, how are you going to get the, the hardware constructed in minutes or even hours? And that's per cycle, and you need lots of iterations.
I guess you could just focus on refining the software primarily and get most of your benefits by creating better AI software that then creates better AI software instead of focusing on the hardware. Maybe the concept is that current hardware might already be fast enough with a good enough algorithm that you can get a, a huge takeoff in minutes without creating new hardware. My general understanding of the theory is that they would design new hardware in addition to designing new software and that both would be important. And that's going to make it take more than minutes. Yeah, so one thing I can say in the singularity model's defense is they aren't just taking a existing growth curve and extrapolating that it will continue. They're just looking at the data so far and trying to guess what the pattern is. Like the population growth stuff he's talking about. They're, uh, they're making up the entire thing. It's not based on past data. They're making it up for conceptual reasons. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. So far, a decent amount of this article just feels like these claims are really strong and weird and counterintuitive and not common sense. Which is true, but, like, not a good point. He's just kind of saying this stuff is more sci-fi than a lot of people realize. Yes, yes it is. That does not make it false. The idea of, like, uploading copies of humans, like... I, like, so what? Like, if the other part is correct, then yes, that, that will follow. That's not the part you should be trying to criticize. It's not very relevant. Like, if you accept the first ten parts of their story, then this is one of the many implications that is not problematic at that point. It's, it's pretty trivial at that point. Similarly with the extinction. Like, if you grant the first part of the story, they could easily render us extinct. That's not, under the, the relevant premises, that's not a problem. So I could try to point out some error that this is just sort of appealing to common sense or intuition or something in silly ways. Like, I think this is low quality. But the, the part that's wrong is kind of implied, whereas the actual statements are fairly mundane. Like, it's difficult to overstate. Right, true. If all goes well, it is held that. It's like, true, yes. That's the, like, the sentence is fine. It's what I think he's trying to hint at to readers that I think is wrong. And I don't like arguing with the hinted at parts. I would rather argue with the stuff he straight up says. But so far he keeps saying fairly bland stuff.
and he's still kind of setting the stage. And I'm getting far enough in that I'm getting a little bit worried that he's just going to keep doing this for the whole article instead of getting to what I would consider the meat, the serious argument. And if I get to the end and I'm like, just like, oh, well, he admitted the omitted having actual good arguments, that'll be kind of sad and also hard to write down as a clear error, just like I never got to the good part. So he's mentioning this again with still no attempt to explain or define what an order of magnitude of intelligence is. Both like the general concept of like what are degrees of intelligence at all, and then the more specific issue of like how much is an order of magnitude. Like if you find like a, a stupid person and compare them to me, is that like a half an order of magnitude difference? One order of magnitude? Five orders of magnitude? Like you're not giving me a ballpark of what your scale is. So one of the things they're assuming here is that a mouse is intelligent. And it's just a matter of degree difference between mice and humans, which is something I do not agree with. I have disagreements with some of their premises, their framework. To briefly explain that, I don't think that there is a difference of degree between AlphaGo and myself. And I think a mouse is kind of like a complicated cross between a Roomba and AlphaGo and some other non-intelligent software. And there's two ways people disagree with that. One is that they say, no, 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 mice are way smarter than that. Mice are beyond some breakpoint compared to present day software and just a completely different kind of thing, qualitatively different. They have some sort of special intelligence that we haven't figured out how to program yet. Then on the other hand, there's people who say, yeah, yeah, mice are just a collection of tricks and algorithms and stuff, kind of like you say. But that's all humans are except better ones. So there's no fundamental difference. So there's people who think that there's a fundamental difference between AlphaGo and intelligence, and that humans and mice are both on the intelligence side, separate from AlphaGo. And then there's people who think humans and mice are both actually similar to AlphaGo. Whereas I think that mice are similar to AlphaGo and humans are not. Okay, so this section was called formulating the hypothesis, and he wasn't trying to make serious... Okay, that's actually weird, though, because he... Okay, this was super unfair. On the one hand, the section is allegedly about formulating the opposing view and stating it, and that's partly what he did. But then partly what he did was hint that it's wrong, like a bunch, like it was a very biased presentation. He didn't focus solely on formulating the singularity hypothesis. He gave non-meaty arguments against it.
Okay, I don't know if I'm going to count that as an error, but I figured I'd write it down. We got one example about mice, mouse versus human. Is that supposed to be one order of magnitude or is that like five or what? Okay, neither of those is the my main argument that I would make against these people. Although I am skeptical of human level AI anytime soon, I don't think that's the main issue. Like we can discuss when it is invented, what will it be like? The the timeline is a secondary issue. And then I uh I think general intelligence is an okay concept, although specific formulations might be flawed. Right, so no mention of questioning the epistemology behind it, the, uh, the philosophical foundations. Why is he repeating himself? Like, we just had a whole section formulating a hypothesis, and now he's stating it again. And again, that's a restatement. This is boring. Is he trying to make the paper longer? Is this padding? So he's spending a lot of time trying to say that there's an, a really high burden of proof. And I don't think that's a good way to argue. Like, I, I think it's fine as a minor point that, yeah, you're making some big claims, you better have some big arguments or whatever. But I don't think it's a point worth uh, belaboring so much. You should actually look at the arguments and evaluate them rather than focus on how high a bar you think they're supposed to meet. You should instead try to point, point out refutations of them. Can you find a flaw in their arguments? Either... A, an active flaw, like a, a way that the argument is wrong, like a, an internal contradiction, for example, or a contradiction to a fact, or, on the other hand, a flaw of omission where their arguments, even if true, would not reach their target.
so he's um he's conflating arguments with evidence like his idea of an evidential burden involves making arguments he's counting arguments as evidence I think that's confused and problematic, but debatably, it's more of a terminology issue. You can see actually here that he um he agrees with a lot of his opponents' premises about epistemology, the ones that I would dispute, like he's talking about credences. Okay, this is a reasonable thing to ask singularity people to address. I'm pretty sure that they have said things to address this. Okay, I think this is a terrible argument. But it's not false as written. It's the implication is false that this is representative. Maybe I'll get to that later and explain why those are wrong. He's so repetitive. I want to highlight this. Good ideas became harder to find. Good ideas became harder to find. Good ideas become harder to find.
This is a standard tactic. It's biased and shitty. He's pretending to be so unbiased and superior, basically more rational by admitting there's some truth to the other side, but he's actually at the same time calling it only a sliver, which is insulting, so it's it's silly. He's pretending to like listen to the other side, but he's so obviously not. It's really condescending. He's just pronouncing the truth. He knows how much truth there is and what objections. Well, so this is silly too. Like, which artificial agents? Like, AlphaGo excels at maintaining certain types of knowledge stocks. But when we develop a GI, it's going to be different in some way. So will it excel at obtaining large knowledge stocks? Or will, in our quest, in our quest to make human-like intelligence, will it end up being like a human and maybe not so good at this anymore? Maybe it will lose some abilities that other computer software has. Like you have to consider what will it be like before you can know whether it will be good at this or not. Anyway, this whole thing, I'm pretty sure that they have some sort of model of mind space in which they claim there are plenty of super, super intelligent minds to be invented. And whether or not there are limits on that space, it goes way, way beyond current humans. Enough for a singularity, a discontinuity, even if there's some fundamental limit at the end where you run out of improvement. So I think I think they've said stuff that addresses this. This doesn't seem like a reasonable way to object to the singularity hypothesis people. You know, he doesn't even try to consider counter arguments. Again, he's wrong a lot more by omission than by what he actually says, like the lack of considering any actual reasonable counter-argument a singularity person might say. Like, I don't think it's hard to think of something they could say back to this where they would not be convinced. This is such an indirect way of arguing. Instead of like trying to think about what would an AGI be and how would it work, and then what does that imply, 
He's instead saying, let's take something we're familiar with and then assume that's going to be some sort of limitation on the AGI. Instead of reasoning out about how AGIs work, he's just reasoning out something easier to reason about. And then saying, well, that might provide a problem for AGIs. Okay, bottlenecks. So I hope he's not going to say bottlenecks are a real problem. And if the AI runs into one of them, that would be a big problem, rather than actually point out a specific thing he thinks would be a bottleneck under some sort of specific AGI model. Similarly with this, he didn't even talk about specifically like what type of research, what would the AGIs be researching, and then run out of good ideas for. It's so generic and vague. Okay, this is just wrong. The, the problem is that at once. If you just delete at once, it's fine.
Oh, he's sort of bringing up something specific. He's like, maybe they'll need better search algorithms. Okay, why is he bringing this up? I'm just skimming now because I think I wrote enough errors. So.
Oh, this is just silly. Yeah, I'm not really interested. Basically, I think that brains literally are computers, and of course, uploading is possible in theory and will work fine. Consciousness, whatever it is, is an emergent property of computation by physical computers with no souls. And having carbon atoms and organic molecules does not make them fundamentally different. Yeah, I don't agree with this, but never mind. How did I come up with a specific number? That's silly. I don't think it means they're wrong. I think that they're under incentives to put numbers on it. But I, I think the numbers they put on it are silly. But I wouldn't strongly hold that against the singularity hypothesis in general. It's kind of irrelevant, but people like numbers. But I think the 3% and the 10% are just made up and basically meaningless. Okay, yeah, I read enough. Let's go back through this. I didn't read like a hundred percent of words, but reasonably close.
Okay, I think I should give one example of bias.
need more context on this one.
It's like too insulting, I guess. I better not play it. But um Like I think that's what's going on here. How do you spell AlphaGo correctly? Alright, you just capitalize. But no space. Okay, I got the term right. This is the, the actual term they use. Wanted to make sure. Haven't talked to anyone about it for a couple of years, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've read this. Oh, it's not even long. Right, so clearly somewhere in my design space, there's one that is good at um, maintaining large stocks of knowledge, and there's also a different one that is bad at it. So I don't think he under the author understands Mary's position.
bit over an hour and a half. I think I'm done. Seems good enough. The only thing I'm considering is reordering the errors. Like, I don't like this one the most, so maybe I shouldn't have it first. Yeah, I think I'm just going to move it, but then I have to renumber them, which isn't a huge deal. I'll just put it last. I think that's fine. I think the, air, the order is good enough now. I'll just renumber. Alright, one, two, three. Four. Five. Six. Okay, so I upload, add the URL, and then it's postable.